Okay, I thought I'd return to doing another landscape painting. It's been a little while since I've done one and I'm starting to miss doing I really love doing landscapes. It's one of my favourite things to do. So I thought I would do a African type landscape, a bit of a, a sun set with some trees and, and some grass. Now I'll just run you through the uh, different settings that I've got it to. I've opened an A4 canvas just to the default settings template that's within Procreate. And I'm, the brush I'm going to use is a well, I'm going to use the airbrush generally, probably mainly the medium airbrush. I will use the soft airbrush for transitions in the sky and things like that. But when I want to get to some more specific, sharper details, I might switch to the medium brush. And in terms of the colours that I'm going to be using, um, I've selected a range of colours already. I'm going to put all the codes for these down in the description. All you need to do is take a note of them, go to this section within Procreate, type in those codes, the hexadecimal codes, um, press return and then you just need to start piecing them down into your own color palette and you'll be able to recreate the exact colors that I'm going to show you. The reason to do that is it's just kind of difficult to show on camera. Um, the colors aren't necessarily portrayed as accurately as, as you'd like so the codes help with that. For those people that support me over at Patreon um, there is a download or downloadable file that just saves you the time of punching in the codes. If you want to know more about that there is a link for that in the description uh, feel free to have a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go on my color palette and I've got really pretty much the range of colors here that I'm going to use. The first color here you'll notice is a very dark blue but that isn't the first color I'm going to use. I'm going to reserve that dark blue for the kind of shadows on the clouds that are in front of the sky. So the first color I'm going to use is the next blue along, and that's going to give me the top area of the sky. So as I said, I'm probably going to use a soft airbrush for this part of the painting. I'm going to turn the size of the brush up quite big, uh, not quite full opacity for the brush, but almost. Now you can, with the pencil pressure, you can sort of press less. I'll press more lightly with the actual Apple Pencil and it will give you a transition. Um, another way of doing that later on is to use the blur tools. If you feel like you've gone too far with it, then there's always ways to pinch it back, reduce the, the impacts of that dark color. And then you'll notice the next two colors I've got is, is a lighter version of the similar kind of blue and almost like a grayed version. So I'm going to alternate between those. I'll start with a grayer version to begin with. I'm going to reduce the size of the brush a little bit and the opacity a little bit as well. Let's just see how this blends in. And I'm going to go to the, the next color along and do the same thing there. Okay, so I've just adjusted the, the camera so that it picks up more of that transition. I realize it's a little bit dark. Hopefully you can see a little bit better now. So really the section that I want is, is that part there. Um, I've extended it further down for now, but I'm actually going to cover that with different colors. Okay, the next color I'm going to be using, I'm gonna to go to a different area on the colors. I'm gonna to go to this orange color. Now I'm gonna turn the opacity down for this. I'm gonna keep the brush quite big, but I'm gonna turn the opacity down. And I really want to just start pressing lightly and bringing in this warmer color into the mix. Now I'm going to have it concentrated in this area more, a little less over this side. I'm going to do the sun in this area, so this is where the majority of the warmth and the warmer colors are going to be. So you'll notice I've got some pinks and purples here. The reason I've got those colors is that that orange is going to, when it gets further away from the sun, it's going to transition from the orange to a pink and then a purple as it gets even further away. So I'm going to apply this to this whole area over this side. Maybe turn the size of the brush down a little bit. Been quite rough at this point. And go to the purple and just start bringing that purple in a little bit more as well. Again, I'm going to reduce the size of the brush. There's going to be a band, maybe a bank of low-lying cloud that's going to be a bit darker just on the very horizon there will be other sections higher up as well but i'm just trying to get the the general sense of the the sky first go back to my colors go for the orange maybe and start to bring it in here as well so on this horizon line i'm going to have it generally getting a little bit darker so the sun's going to be slightly above this point but there's going to be like a low-lying darker band 
that goes from reddy orange on this side over to sort of pinky purple as it gets further away. I'm just doing this all on one layer to begin with. You could separate them out, but there's going to be quite a few different elements, so I don't want to create dozens of layers if I can just try and simplify it a little bit just to have a smaller number. But if you feel more confident using more layers, then feel free to do that. I'm just spending a little bit of time lightly blending these in. Sometimes I will rely on the Gaussian blur to help blend things in, but I'm doing a little less of that in this instance. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a sun just to give me a reference point for where everything is going to be. So it's not going to be the finished effect for it, but I'm going to put it in anyway, just so it, it gives me a, a perspective of where everything else is going in relation to it. So I know that's going to be the brightest colour. So I will be using things like yellow for highlights in the cloud, but the yellow is going to be impacted by the light coming from this light source, obviously. So I'm going to create another layer. And on this layer, I'm going to be still using pretty much the colours of the sky. This bottom layer is the colours of the land, whereas this, even though it will be land, it still, because it's so much in the distance, is using the same colour scheme, the same colour palette as the clouds um, too. So the colours I'm going to be using are mainly just the pink and, and purple here. I may use a touch of the blues at the very edges, but it's going to be mainly the, the pink and purple. So in fact, the purple is going to be the, the, the majority of this. I don't necessarily want a straight line. I could draw a line, hold it, and it will snap to an absolutely straight line. I mean, you could do that, and then you could add a slight wave to it. In fact, yeah, we'll do that, just for the sake of ease, because I know that people might struggle with getting a, a straight line and worry about that a little bit too much. You could do it freehand like that, absolutely fine, or you can draw it, hold it, and it snaps to a straight line. Like I say, it's gonna be a landscape, so probably it's going to have a slight curve in places, undulate a little bit. So in terms of it being a straight line, I'm really not wanting to have it absolutely straight. I'm just gonna get rid of this white area at the bottom. It's always a distraction to have white on your canvas. I think the soonest point you can get rid of that, you can see what you've got a little better to work with. Okay, so that will do for the horizon line. I'm going to shift the colors a little bit though. So like I say, I'm using the pink and the purple. So I'll switch to the pink and there's gonna be more of a concentration of that where the sun is. Turn the opacity down a little bit. I could do that just with pencil pressure. I don't have to press on completely and that will do the same job, but it's just a little bit easier. You turn the opacity down a little bit as well. In fact, I may extend that slightly, that pink up into the sky too. There's a definite sense of a blur in the lines between the horizon and I may go back to my blue color, the lighter of the blues, and I might start to bring that in on this edge of the horizon line as well. And then I'm going to create another layer. And this time I am going to move to my colors down here. Uh, I'm not going to do it in the absolute detail to begin with. I'm just going to start placing things in and then I can further amend them later. But I'm not going to go for the darkest color. I'm going to go for the next color along. And on this layer, I'm going to just start placing in, perhaps turn the opacity up and the size of the brush down. I'm still on the soft airbrush. In fact, I might go for the medium airbrush on this one. I think a slightly sharper edge to it is perhaps going to do it justice, create the right effect or closer to the right effect. So I want it generally a darker tone for the foreground grass and land, and I can fade this out. Again, this is not the finish, this is just laying in the general effect and then I can fine tune. I'll go along to another color, mix some of the green in, in areas, turn the opacity down for this, and just blend in some green areas. In fact, that's still too much on the opacity. along to my colours. I think I'm going to then transition to more oranges over the sides. I'm going to turn the size of the brush up a little bit and just really start to get in some of these orange tones. Again, it's the same kind of principle of being warmer over this side and cooler over there. Going for the third colour along, not the green, but the, not the brown, but the more the green brown. Maybe just use that at the bottom of the piece here, underneath the warm colours. Again, we're going to fine tune this and just getting the rough position of things in to begin with and then we'll, we'll go back. So on that basis I'm going to create another layer and now I'm going to start thinking more about the sky again. So I've got in a, 
an essential sort of color scheme in the background, but really it doesn't portray the, the clouds as such, or even the, uh, the light effect properly. So I'm going to go to my darkest blue color, and I'm going to start piecing in some dark cloud editor. In fact, I need to set the brush correctly down. So, so I'm on a medium airbrush, turn the opacity up and the size of the brush down somewhat, and then I can start to put in some of the, the clouds at the top there. So the shadow area of the cloud should contrast and stand out from the darkest blue in the background. So a kind of shadowed area of the cloud should be darker than the sky in the background. I am keeping it as kind of generally quite thin bands, but I'm, at the same time, I'm using a circular motion with the, the pencil. So sometimes I'll drag it across, but whenever I stop and slow down and add more detail, then I'm going to use this circular motion. Might join these up a little bit. So though it's two sections, they might fuse together. Now, another component of these clouds is that they've got a strong light source in the sky too. So we're going to have a strong shadow, but that is going to be contrasted with a strong light source. So I'm going to stick to the yellow, or I'm going to move to the yellow rather, turn the opacity way down for this. In fact, I'm going to go to my soft airbrush because I don't want sharp edge for these details. And I'm going to start gradually picking out the lower edge of this cloud. Now that yellow does seem very yellow. I can alternate between the yellow and the orange. So a kind of mixture of the two, maybe in the very lightest areas, we're going to use some of that yellow, but maybe it goes from orange to yellow as well. Always add a touch of white in there as well, just to bleach out some of that yellow a little bit if it's too saturated. I'm now going to have another band of cloud coming across this middle section. So in its lightest areas, it's going to be more purple. But then in other areas, it's going to be more of a blue. So it's going to be more blue over here, but it's perhaps going to have a bit more of the purple when it's nearer the sun. Now it's more middle distance. So these clouds are probably nearer to you and these ones are going to be further away. So they, they generally blend in a little bit more with the color scheme of the, the sky. Again, picks up more of that warmth. I'm going to go to the gray blue there that's in the mix. I'm going to use that with along with the purple as well. Now the color doesn't have to be right first time, it's going to be about combinations of colors. So don't think that, you know, the first color you're going to put down is the, is the right effect. I might have these colors selected here, but it doesn't mean that they are, as soon as you put it down, it's the right color. It's the combinations, it's the mixing of the colors that's going to create the effect. So just like if you were using real paint, that's, that's pretty much how it works. So it always amuses when people, um, when they're talking about digital painting, as it were, they think somehow it's a it's a cheat. And, and certainly there are tools and shortcuts to some things, but in many ways you have to think about it in much the same terms as you would do with traditional paints and materials. There's definitely certain techniques that are universal and cross traditional and digital paint. Okay, I feel like I need another colour. I'm going to select the this colour here, and I'm going to go to the colour wheel, and I'm going to make a darker version of that. And I'm going to place that down here. So I'm now going to use this colour, and it's, it's given me a more accurate version of the clouds. So this often happens in the middle of a painting, as you realise your pre-selected colours don't necessarily react and behave the same way that you imagined. So you have to add more colours to your scheme as you go along. That's all part of the process as well. So if you're wondering what that color was on its own on the color codes, now you know. But like I say, it's not one color. If you use just the, you know, if you had one color, if I had that color selected initially and all I was using for this section was that color, you wouldn't get a richness of color palette. Sometimes it's the few different colors that make up one area on a painting that gives it a richness and makes it feel more alive. What you'll find is that your paintings can appear quite flat and a bit dead seeming by comparison if you just use one flat color. It's the, the variety and range of overlaying colors that gives it a bit more life, I think. So in this area, I'm going to start just shutting down some of the, the lighter colors. I'm going to have some breaks in the clouds, some gaps, 
but you can see the sky coming through. Remember, this is on a layer, so it doesn't affect the actual initial layer of the sky. So if at any point I decide I've done too much of this or I need to erase sections, then I can do, and it won't affect the general background color. Again, that's another advantage of digital work over traditional painting is that you can change and adjust things as you go along. If you want to call that cheating, I guess you can, but it's not really the way that I see it. So I'm reducing the size of the brush and I'm just going to do a few sections that break away from the mass here. So I'm giving it a slightly rougher edge, some little broken points along that edge there, so it's more textural. If you are finding this level of detail and this type of sky a little bit overwhelming, um, I have done other skies and other landscapes that are probably better suited for beginners. So if you're feeling that this is a little bit too much for you, then maybe check out one of those first. And then when you've mastered that, come back to this and you can um, have a go at these. I don't want to do sort of super beginner level landscapes at all times. I want to keep enabling people who are watching my channel and genuinely want to keep moving forward. I want to keep giving you fresh challenges really. So, and also for myself, if I keep things too simple, it's gonna get boring as well. So this is certainly a more challenging sky than I've perhaps shown on camera before. I'm going to go along to my purple color and I'm going to start blending this in a little bit more again. So it might be in some sections that you, you don't end up seeing much of the background sky, but it, it still gives you a starting point to judge everything else by. If I was to remove the initial background layer, you'll see there's still plenty of it showing through. Okay, I'm going to move on to a different element here. Um, I'm going to be adding some highlights in the sky. Now, I'm not entirely happy with this yellow. I'm going to create a, another yellow. I'm going to orange it up slightly and make it a slightly whiter version as well. And I'm going to place that down here. So that's an, another additional color to the original color scheme too. Like I say, you've got to adjust your palette as you go along sometimes. And this is another color that I feel is going to be better suited to the color scheme. The initial yellow, that I selected, I didn't realize just how pure yellow and saturated it was until I put it in the context of everything else. So I'm turning the size of the brush down and the opacity up. I want to start adding some fine details here. In fact, that's too small. Because bear in mind, I'm not zooming in and out. If you were zooming in and you want to go to absolute super detail, then that's fine. But I always paint these tutorials so that the image is full screen, but I don't really want to be zooming in and out all the time. It just makes life the extra bit more complicated after going to a ridiculous amount of detail, which is going to be a little bit more time consuming and just not necessarily beneficial to watch either. So I'm just concentrating on quite a lot of textural elements around the sun at this point. I'm not being too specific, I'm just creating lines that go across. And what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to then start moving to the orange and, and I'll just give you an example now. I can maybe then select an area and I want to then pick that out. In fact, I'm gonna go for the darker orange and just pick that out so that stands forward. And that becomes another cloud that sticks out a bit more. So I'll do the yellow first. As you can see, I'm creating a general lighter area around the sun as well. And I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to use that slightly darker, more muddy orange there. And I think I might use a touch of that for some of the clouds that cut across. Let's just test that. Yeah, it might be a bit too dark. Okay, we'll try the orange that was pre-selected for this task. And let's see how we go with that. So I'm going to have some clouds that are going across here. And there's going to be a mixture of the two oranges. So I've used the lighter one. I'm going to use a little bit of the darker one. Maybe it's going to cut in front of the sun a little bit. It's really going to push that sun back. And I'm going to move along to this pink color and 
I'm going to have the cloud sort of fairly quickly changing from orange to pink, actually, just to darken it up a little bit as it moves away. And then it's going to change to blue as well. So I'm extending that pink across. I'm going to move to the purple just to darken up some of these areas. So you can see I'm using this purple. I'm just going over some of these areas, darkening them up, just judging them, seeing whether they seem to sit right in the landscape, bringing them further forward if necessary. Again, the general trend is going to be getting cooler as it goes to this area, so I'll move to a cooler blue. And again, this band as it comes across is going to be cooling down. I'm just going over this area. I felt like it was a bit dark actually, so I'm, I'm softening it a little bit. I want to keep the darkest area up here. This is going to be roughly equivalent in terms of darkness. It's going to be cooler over this side, but I don't want it to be much, much uh, darker either in tone. So on that basis, I probably need to, with the orange, go into this area, maybe add a little bit more of the orange, turn the opacity down, just soften up this area so it's a little bit warmer. In fact, that's too strong still. Very easy to overdo it, so I'm going to turn the opacity way down and the brush size up a little bit and just feather in a slight orange into the cloud in that section. I don't even know whether this is going to show up in camera, to be fair, but it is having a, a subtle effect here, and that's sometimes the best kind of effect. So I'm using that orange now just to extend some of that orange across, blend it in a little bit more. Uh, I feel like I need more red down here. I'm not sure whether that's going to be red enough. I could use that, and I could turn the opacity way down and just add a little bit more of the red into this sec section down here. Okay, I'm probably going to come back to the sky later on. I've spent a little while in it already, and there'll be more things that I can add to it, but I just want to move on to another section, because if you're watching this and you think, yeah, you want to do the landscape, but you don't want to spend too much longer on the sky, then I'll whiz through the other areas, and then I'll fine-tune the sky as well at the end, but I'll give you the general sense of the piece too. So I do need to spend a little bit of time on that horizon line, however. So I'm going to go to this new addition that I added, and I'm going to just darken up. And I'm going to turn the opacity up with that colour. And I'm just going to sharpen up that area of the horizon. Give it a darker edge so that it, it seems lighter in the sky than it does on the land. It is quite important, that. Okay, so I'm going to create another layer. There's lots of layers. Um, I've tried to limit the number of layers somewhat, but there always is. Um, tends to be a lot of layers in my work. So, so I'm going for a real dark colour at this time. I'm going to start placing in some trees maybe just over the uh, the land area. So this is the land area here where it's the greeny orange. And I'm going to do some trees that are just over the other side of a, a hump in the landscape. I'm going to use pretty much a black. I'm just going to keep some blob shapes so that they're trees that you can just see at the top of the trees maybe. So I'm not going to do them that much in focus. I mean, once I've got a blob shape in, I maybe do a few blobs around it, you can see, but it's not particularly detailed. So this gives you a bit of context. I think sometimes it's the tiniest details that you can add to something that just starts to bring it to life. And, and this is one of them. It really is going to give you that separation between the, the land and the sky, or the foreground land at the very least. So it really pushes the sky back and brings this area of land much further forward. So it might be that I see a bit more of the tree over this side. I don't know. Maybe you can see the beginning of a trunk. Now this is sort of African trees. So you will often see trees in African landscapes. I'm not quite sure of the variety of tree. Perhaps I need to look into that. If anyone knows the typical kind of trees that you see in a lot of African landscapes and you recognize the style of tree that I'm going to end up doing, then please let me know. So on that basis, I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to do a foreground tree or a selection of foreground trees at this point. Um, I'm going to create one that's a little bit further away. So not a massive trunk on this tree. I'm doing these trees on different layers so that I can subdue 
one of the layers, I can shrink it, I can reposition it at any different point. Now for the canopy, or the, the leaves, I'm not going to zoom in and, and spend a huge amount of time on each one. I'm just doing dashes and blobs, keeping it relatively dense at the top, but quite sparse underneath that point. Okay, I'm going to turn the size of the brush down and I can just do some branches to join some of these features up. Okay, so that'll do for my first tree. Create another layer. Like I said, I'm doing all these trees on different layers. I'm going to create one that's further away, but it's still this size, or this side rather, of the, uh, the land. So you can see more of the trunk compared to the ones that are over the, the slight hill. Do the trunk, do a couple of branches, and then I'm just going to, again, keep it quite vague. Just a suggestion of leaves near the top. That will do for that one. Um, I'm going to create another layer again, and this one I'm going to do a real foreground tree at this point. So I'm going to place it here. There's a cluster of three trees. I think that three is a really good number if you're looking for features in a landscape. And if you do one, that's fine. Two can be fine, and three can be fine. As soon as you get more than that, then you're losing your sense of a focal point. But I always find clusters of three a really good number for them to have a kind of relationship with each other. Turn the size of the brush up, or the opacity up, and the size. Get the trunk in. Good to have some branches coming off from this tree and stretching out towards the, the sun a little bit. Adds a bit more drama, brings that part of the painting in as well. I'm not going to do thousands of branches on this. I'm just getting a few major ones in there and then I'm going to start piecing in some leaves or a suggestion of leaves anyway. Okay so I'm going to turn the size of the brush up and I'm going to start placing in some textures. In fact I know I'm going to turn the brush size down a little bit. Now I wish I could say there was a shortcut to this. I guess you could use textured brushes. I'm not really very keen on that. I prefer to do everything manually so I might have to add good few hundred or even a who knows maybe a thousand little dots to this well that's fine it doesn't take that long really in the scheme of things it takes just a few mil extra minutes to do that personally i think it's worth it to to look at an image to know that every single mark you have created and it's not a brush that somebody else has created that's done the work for you and you've created that texture if you know how to do that manually yourself and you want to go ahead and create your own brushes that's fine it is a shortcut and it can be very useful but I just, I like to look at an image and know that it's 100% created by my own hand. And likewise on this piece, I haven't used the Gaussian blur. Sometimes I will do that. It is a useful shortcut, certainly. So I don't have anything against use of tools, but on this particular piece, I'm, I'm doing it the longer way, really. Okay, so that'll do for the rough shape of the tree. Um, I might do some adjustments to that at a later point, but I'm just gonna create another layer yet again. Um, and this time I'm going to be creating some textural elements to the, the grass. I'm gonna do this with a medium brush. And what I'm going to try and do is create a sort of lumpy effect on the ground. So I'm going to be using predominantly these colors now. So I'm going to use the darker one to begin with, turn the opacity down and I just need to start placing it. Again, it's gonna be a very similar technique to the leaves in the tree. I just want to create some texture in this. It's not gonna be photographic, it's still, you know, very much an impression. The overall effect from a distance, if you sort of squint and blow your eyes a little bit, they might 
have a more realistic effect, but certainly when you zoom in, it's not going to be 100% photographic. I think what's interesting about painting, from my own point of view anyway, is the, the effect without having every single tiny detail on. However much that might be impressive, I, I actually think to create the effect with a simpler level of detail is in some ways more impressive to me. It's more interesting to me anyway. And actually the level of detail that I, I do generally go into is, is more than a lot of artists go into. I've always been impressed by those people that can create the effects and yet keep it extremely rough and, and quite sort of loose. It's never really been my style. I'm, I'm heading that way a little bit more, but I've always been impressed by those people that can be very expressionistic and yet create the overall effect as well. I'm getting there. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm I'm sort of changing the directions a little bit. I don't want to be left with any sense of cross hatching too much like that, but I'm trying not to do it all in one direction because you don't want to notice too much perhaps the, the actual brush strokes, unless that's specifically what you want to do. I know some people, you know, will do very consistent sort of marks like this and they do the whole painting that way. And that's another way of approaching it. That's not the way I'm approaching it now though. I'm just keeping the I wanted to say brush or the Apple Pencil moving quite quickly. It is a brush in a sense. It's I'm using an airbrush for the Procreate app. In my head, I, I'm seeing it as a brush. I'm using colors. So I'm just trying to create a sense that there's texture here. There's undulating grass and land. I'm not going to get to the point of painting individual blades of grass. It's just the effect. So I'm using this opportunity to darken up areas here. So we're getting a lighter area here, and then it gets lighter again for the sky. So it goes lighter, darker tone, and an even darker tone for the foreground land. The blacks will always get blacker when you get nearer to. Okay, I'm going to switch to the orangey color here because the sun is going to create or reflect off this area, perhaps give some orange highlights in certain parts. You could even create a, a bigger, hazier kind of sense of the orange coming in there too. Again, I'm going to use some of the green, turn the size of the brush down. I want to create a variety of greens and oranges here. I don't want it to look dead by just using one type of colour. I want to mix in a variety of oranges and greens and browns so that it has a much more textural look, creates more interest for the eye. I'm going to go to the brighter orange, it's actually one of my sky colours. I'm just going to use it to create just a little bit of extra highlights in the, the land here, not much at all. I'm going to use this very sparingly. to exaggerate slightly where it's bouncing off the land just a little bit there. Now I'm just going to go across my layers now and I'm going to start to fine tune some of the parts. So I'm going to go back to my layer that has mainly the cloud detail. I think that's the layer where I'm going to add the fine detail. So I'm going to go back to my blue colours and I'm going to add some sharper details to turn the size of the brush down along this part of this, the uh, distant land. Just to start to add a bit more blue in there, sharpen it up, give it a sharper top edge. Maybe also go to the purple, add some more purple in there, so it's a mixture of the two. In fact, I'm going to turn that purple up, turn the size of it down. I'm really going to sharpen up some of the, go to that blue in fact. That's the, remember the new colour that I created? I think that is going to be a colour that's useful for quite a lot of areas, maybe create a couple of features. So there might be trees that are going off in the, far distance there. Go back to my pink, blend that in a little bit more, turn the opacity down and see the transition too clearly. So I'm just breaking that up a little bit more again. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the sky. So I've got the bright yellow there. I'm going to pick out some of those little highlights again. I mean, the overall effect is, is pretty much there for the landscape. I'm just want to be a little bit more choosy about the fine details at this point. 
Sometimes it's the last part of the painting where you can really tweak it and bring out some of the magic that, that happens. If the groundwork is solid, the foundations are solid for your painting, then it allows you to play at this point and really bring out some fine details that bring it to life. But it is important to get the foundations correct. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for today. If you want to watch more landscape tutorials like this, then please check out my other videos and playlists. If you want to support me over at Patreon, there is a link for that in the description. Otherwise, do subscribe and I shall see you here again. See you soon.